Frank, I'm going to start with you over at NOAA. Give us a top line on a, on a program that you'd like to highlight that you're working on over there at the Chief Technology Office. So I think uh, so. I'm going to cheat a little bit and give you two, but I think, <laughs> I think that there, there, there's there's a lot of really exciting stuff that that goes into the the products and the forecasts that we do, and I think um, you know when we talk about technology, um, I, I you know going back to the, the thing I mentioned before about extending people's ability to do their job and you know get more data, do more in, in, with with more technology that's accessible. Um, so. In the in the area of high performance computing, uh, things like cloud uh, and 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 kind of really pushing the software envelope uh, are are enabling not only the NOAA scientists but also the community of scientists, right? So there's a, a program called Epic with a NOAA, uh, and they're using things like cloud to to really engage with the community and get the best um, the best knowledge into the modeling and really move uh, operational models forward. So, so the, those kinds of programs really not only engage our stakeholders, but they engage our scientists in, in, in general, but allowing that tech, you know, the high performance platform, the software platforms to be accessible uh, to more than just internal and NOAA, I think is really important. Mm -hmm. um, it really provides a good engagement platform. Uh, and, and kind of along with that, there are a number of other programs that, that support all these things, but uh, things like uh, there's a, in the CIO's office is a, a program called the NOAA Open Dissemination Project that allows uh, you know, everybody to interact with NOAA's data, uh, to, to kind of engage as a citizen scientist or an interested party. And it, it's got other other you know effects as well as you know, drives parts of industry. Weather and climate data drives a lot of, of industry around us, whether whether we know it or not, or from shipping to farming to to whatever. Uh, so so really it, it's a, it's a way to kind of not just improve our science, but it's also to improve the ecosystem ar around that. Uh, and then the other side of that is, is and you know, and things you can see and things, how, how are we aiding people? Um, you know, there really is, I think, a, um, a tangible, exciting benefits in, in things like uncrewed systems, right? As observation uh, platforms, as improved sensors, but really, as a way to collect data that either we couldn't before because it was, you know, it was a hazard to people, or or extends that, you know, the the, the brave people that go and fly into hurricanes and 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 really, uh, they have the coolest jobs in NOAA. I'll just say it out loud, but but you know, there, there are people out there that are that are getting observations that are that are doing really tremendous jobs at high risk and and things like ocean drones uh, can can take you know sea surface conditions from um, from a hurricane and you know you can't do that with a person, right? So so those kinds of platforms really will extend the forecaster's ability uh, and, and the science's ability to really understand events, better prepare for them in the future, uh, and really kind of put the best science forward to get there to get everyone's uh, no, no question.